Welcome to Drone Photography Podcast, weekly show for drone photographers by drone photographers. I'm Peter, and I'm here with not Micah, your co-host today. No, nope, not Micah today. Micah got the boot, and I am here with my very dear friend and a vicious competitor, uh, <sighs> Mr. John Wiki. Vicious. No. A vicious. I'm angry. You're I'm, angry. I'm angry Johnny. Mr. You know, John Wiki, uh, a.k.a. Angry Johnny. Yeah, that's right, or Johnny Current. <laughs> Johnny Current on Facebook, is, uh, oh, as a staff oh. photographer at the Hartford Current, I have a following on Facebook for Johnny yep. Current. So so Johnny Current, Angry Johnny, Angry Johnny or on John Twitter. Wiki. Yep. Wow, you have many personalities. Or Samara Media, too. That's my other uh, multimedia or Samara company Media. for my own stuff. Yes. All right, so you have, to, wow, you have, so how many 30-second pitches? Do you have a 30-second pitch for every one of no, these? No, I don't. No, no, you have you have one to go. I have, all I right. have a rambling three-hour thing, I think. But. Ah, all right. So let's let's start with a little introduction, actually. Sure. So you are a staff photographer with Harford Current. I am. I've awesome. been there uh, since 1999 as a staffer. I've been a photojournalist for probably 30 years now. For 30 years. Yeah, I know. I only look 39, so, like so a, I was very young when I took to Yeah, it. I know. It must have been, like, well, still middle school. No, I, I got into it when I was 28 years old. I was, I was in a factory for 10 years as a tool and die maker and uh, wow. decided to be a photographer once I spent some time on the ski slopes in Vermont and uh, uh-huh. that's what got me started down this path so of uh, that's what stardom. Got you, that's what got you into photography. Okay, yeah. so for our listeners Freezing in South... my ass off in the, in the <laughs> Vermont winters. So for our listeners in South Africa, Australia, and Iceland, could you... Uh, just quickly say what Harvard Current is, or Harvard. What, the Harvard your, Current is the there? it is the longest continuously published newspaper in the Americas. Is it? It is. Really? Yeah, we've been around wow. since I uh, don't quote me seventeen something eighty something. Dude, that was we, like before paper. We, we celebrated our two hundred fiftieth anniversary, I think, three years ago. Two hundred and thirty years. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred and fifty years. We have published continuously. Wow. Yes. Wow. Was it back then like the guys carving stuff into the wood? Uh, it probably was only being done once a week or something like yeah. that. You know, sent out by Pony Express and, that is and so things cool. like that. But if you take a tour of our place, there's actually a hallway that you walk through and it'll show you some of the original printing presses that wow. were there from... And then you can look on the other side where all the rolling uh, yeah. paper goes through and, and today's modern. That's that's really cool. Yeah. That is cool. So you've been doing that for quite a while. Do you do you fly I was, drones? For? I was doing photography when you still had film. Yeah. Oh, wow. See me too, but I don't remember as a small child. <laughs> <laughs> my first cameras. Yeah. That was very frustrating having to wait without knowing whether it was going to come out or not. It was, but I mean, it had its it had its beauty to it too because it, you didn't have to worry about the instantaneous yeah. satisfaction you have to worry about today where everybody wants things now, yeah. and, you know, in the moment. So, wait a minute. So, did you have to like develop your own photos oh, and yeah. get them all ready? And yep. really, so yeah. you had like, I actually a dark built room. a dark I had to build a dark room in my uh, my two family home that I had in Bristol. Oh, wow. And, Built it in the basement and uh, wow! So yeah. you went from the very basic, not basics, yep. but I'm gonna say roots. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun because you yeah. it was a mystery back then. You know, yeah. you, you went out and you actually had to work hard to figure out whether you exposed things properly. You yeah. didn't just you didn't do what we call chimping today. You yeah, know, take a picture and look in the back of the camera and, and see if it came out right. Yeah, you know? what do you call it? So chimping. 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 Because because most people <laughs> once they take a picture they look they're they're chimping. They're just looking at a little picture <laughs> on the back of their digital. Camera. That's funny. So. Did you have like a film budget so you couldn't like take too many pictures? You had to. Yeah, yeah you preserve. know, certain. I started at the Bristol Press when I first got started in uh, 1989. Yeah. And they would give us basically three rolls of film of 36 exposure, and wow. that was what you used for all your assignments that day. Wow. And 30 years later, yeah. here you have a little flying robot that you can pretty much feed, yeah. live feed the yep. video, 4K right into, video right into people's know. pockets, really, yeah. to their little screens. Yeah. Pretty can amazing. You, it's pretty mind blowing. Yeah, it is. I'm sure. Do you feel like being a photographer helped you get into the drones quicker? Meaning, meaning, do you think it's easier for a photographer to get into the drones than for a drone pilot to get into a photography? Um, I th- I think there are aspects to both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, as a as a pilot, you know, learning the the nuances of flying and stuff like that, and, yeah. and how to do that is one thing. But having the artistic ability to compose pictures and, and exposure uh-huh. and the right light, I think that did it does help somebody who has a uh, yeah. artistic background or something from a so photojournalistic area. Yeah, understanding the camera controls, the light, yeah. the composition, yeah. it it does translate because you know, I mean, things have gotten a lot easier today when you go mm-hmm. to Part One Hundred Seven. You know, yeah. Um, because you can go out and take a test and never have to prove to anybody you have flown before. I, I know people you who know? have 107 that have, I've met one person 
So I'm not going to say I know people. I've met one person that had 107 and they don't know how to fly drones. Yeah. To me, it's amazing. Yeah, me too. I mean, yeah. if you want to drive a motorcycle today, you wouldn't get you any have, other kind of license to, without. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty crazy, you huh. know. So. Oh well. And 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 those people, you know, nothing against them. Yeah. Everybody's trying to make, uh, you know, the, the great American dream, do a yeah. business and and have some independence and stuff. Yeah. But I think the downfall is that if you don't have an understanding of photography or video or some kind of industry mm -hmm. before you get your license or take to the air yeah. with a drone. Um, it's fun. You can do it for a hobby. But yeah. I think if you're trying to do it for a business, I think you should have some kind of background. Curve. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and there's a lot right. of competition out there. Yeah. Good competition. Totally. So you now you do fly drone for the newspaper, right? I do. Yep. Okay. I've been I've been building and flying for about six years when you and I met and uh, you know, going back to the old days of yeah. of you know. All right, so I do want to talk to you about the journalism, drones in journalism, yep. but we're gonna we're gonna make that a separate segment actually, okay. because it's its own thing. So okay. Talk to me a little bit about how did you, yeah, let's roll it back a little. And how did you get into the drones? What got you interested in them? And then I want to talk about your, your company, your drone okay. gig. Cool. Um, actually, I was sitting there watching a commercial on TV, and I saw some uh -huh. kid take a, a, a small helicopter, RC, and connect his little phone to it and fly out onto a porch. Yeah. And it says, party here tonight. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, light bulb. That could be cool. You know, as a photographer, yeah. how can I do that? And yeah. then, um, when drones first started coming around, I uh, I went to a place in Winstead and uh -huh. uh, RC place and walked into place. Yeah, and Irwin's, talked to Irwin. RC yeah, hobby yeah, said more. Yep, no great guy. RC hobby said no more. Yeah, and no more. Sadly, but that was a great place. Yeah, it was. He was very forthcoming. How and long ago me was out. this? Um, probably six years ago. Six years. So, like in, in drone years, this is like stone age. It was. It was in its infancy when there was no such thing as you know GPS. There was no such thing as uh, barometers yeah. to keep everything level. And, yeah. and you know obstacle avoidance and stuff like that. It was the early multi rotor controllers. Crash, crash and burn. Yeah. It was, it okay. was. It was a lot of fun. I think that's. I think that's when we met for the first time. Yeah. Actually, it was at RC Hobbies, yeah, right? It was. Because I know Erwin was telling me it's like, oh, there's this guy. He builds these crazy contraptions. You, you should see them. <laughs> And he said the same thing about you. I know. <laughs> Which I'm glad he did. I know, yeah, me too. It was, it was really Likewise. good. Yep. And that's how we ran into I, I remember you were you were a builder into it because, of course, you were a machinist and, yeah. and toolmaker exactly. before. So yep. that kind of translated into that. So yeah. did you, what was the first drone that you built? The first drone I what? built was actually something that I, um, actually from Irwin, it was a Gowie mm -hmm. 330. Gawi, th I remember Gawi that 330. One. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. And, you know, it's funny because back in the day when I was first starting out and, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Um, there was the a, long there was, six years ago. There was a ago. group. There was a couple of guys out in California called the, the Drone Kids or yeah. the Copter Kids. Sorry, the, the Copter yeah, Kids. The copter, yeah. And when I would go looking for videos on Gawi 330, these guys were flying it, you know. And, it. you know, we would hard mount the hero. Yeah. GoPro Hero, yeah. the first one, never mind the GoPro <laughs> 2 or whatever, hard mounted to the bottom of the thing and fly around and unstabilized. And, yeah. and it was like, oh, this is so cool, you know? <laughs> and um, I did the same thing too. Yeah. yeah. But it, it was too small. It didn't have a capacity to carry much of anything. So you just, yeah. you know, you just keep growing and growing and yeah. go to Home Depot, buy some aluminum, uh -huh. throw things together and, and experiment. You know it, yeah. Yeah. What flight controllers did you use back then? Uh, back then, the Gowie was the first thing, and then yeah. I started with NASA when, uh, and DJI, you got into NASA. when DJI invaded the market and the, brought out the NASA. When the GPS was still optional? Was still optional, <laughs> yeah. It's like, what, 200 bucks? Yep, 199 or something like yeah. that. And okay. Now, then you got into a heavier lifter. So I remember at some point you built like a Tarot, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Still have it. Still you have still it. still have it's it? A, it's a foldable, yep, X6. It's a foldable X6. Yeah, and, I'll, X and I'll mount a Movi 5 underneath it on occasion. But, you oh, know, wow. I don't fly it that often. Okay, why not? I mean, well, because you really need two people to fly it. You yeah. Really need, you really need, um, the Movi needs to be set up for two people, preferably. Yeah. And and the the cost ratio yeah. is exponential it's like anything else if you go yeah, out and buy it you go out yeah. and buy a mavic air or you know a spark or even a phantom four you yeah. know to start with and 1500 bucks can get you into the game and it's pretty nice yeah. Throw a couple extra batteries in two thousand dollars yeah the heavy, heavy lifters you know you start talking about batteries that are 300 bucks a pop and you oh, need it you know, adds up and you need cause, cause 10 you know, of them just to make you it know through that, the day you know yeah, yeah you 10 of them so there's three thousand dollars in batteries oh, alone it's insane it's insane and then chargers to you yeah know, be able well, to yeah, do all people that, don't so. realize a lot of times with these machines you literally almost have more money in the batteries yeah. just to make it for a day you know and, and i think part of it was you know at the time you wanted to get better quality you know yeah. a hero at the time from gopro gave you a really fisheye 
it was perspective the action. and everything. I call it the, the action the, the, cam, look and feel. Yeah, the sen- <laughs> it was great for FPV, the politically you correct. know, but if you want to do anything for, you know, photography it and stuff, difficult. it was really difficult. It was so, so you want to try and figure out how can I get my DSLR camera onto yeah. one of these things. So you had to build up. Okay. But today, your cameras, like you say, you know, you can get a 4K camera that's... It's evolved so quickly that you can yeah. stick into your pocket, yeah. you know. Fold and it, it up, and take it, it with you. It anyway. flies for half an hour, yeah. three miles away. Yeah. yeah. No, got to stay within visual line of sight, you know. It can fly three miles away. Okay. Well, I have a good vision. <laughs> okay. I ate a lot of carrots. I'm, I'm, I'm aided by, by back, glasses. and Back behind the iron curtain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we had to eat. <laughs> carrots and potatoes. Carrots and potatoes. Okay. Exactly. All right. But back to this. So yep. when you were building these first drones, were you already thinking about, okay, maybe I want to do this as a business? Or oh, was absolutely. it a hobby to you? Absolutely. It was, it was yeah. something that I want to do to try and transition from journalism in the newspaper field okay. into something more. And oh, so it wasn't like an addition to like being a photojournalist. It, you were already thinking about kind of a career change, getting yeah. into okay. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that the newspaper industry is is hurting. You yeah, know, we're, the internet. Everybody says the internet kills the newspaper. Oh, I work but, at a magazine. Trust but, me. But <laughs> I, I but we are we are on the internet. I mean, we provide a lot of content to yeah. the internet that people don't understand comes yeah. from us in the first place. So, so we were fun fact. Uh, domain authorities, yep. very important thing. Yeah, you as mentioned far as this the other day. Yeah, which kind of Hartford Current has more of a domain authority than NBC Universal. I can't believe somebody that's, is actually doing a really good job of SEO. That's and, really cool. Yeah, yeah um, that's awesome. Is, Props backlinks. to you guys back yeah. there. Uh, sorry to interrupt with no, that, no, no, but no, no, it's, it's you guys are yeah. online actually. It's yeah. it's cool, and I think that you're now that they finally discovered the Facebook Live and and uh, you have and the drones actually right. with your reports there. It's yeah. better. It's it's getting there. Yeah, it, it took a little while for them to you know. They were very risk aversive. Yeah. You know, they really don't want to get into it too much, and 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 the legalities to begin with. You know, yeah. getting a license and all that stuff. It it was a lot of hurdles for them to actually okay. grasp onto. But once I started showing them some of the things that I was doing on my own, yeah. you know, um, they said it kind they, of opened their eyes. Yeah, it kind of opened their eyes, and and I've had some compliments recently of things, and they're like, you know, you, we just didn't realize the value that this brings to you now because you never would have been able to see this on. What do you mean? It's it's kind of I don't know. It kind of gives one a pause, right? So you have a a staff photographer that's been there for thirty years. Twenty. If I was thirty, I'm sorry, I, I would have retired by now if it was thirty. Okay, so <laughs> that's been there for twenty years, and obviously it's an incredible resource because you know the area that yeah. you work with. I grew up in I now, grew up in Connecticut, and I know the whole state and yeah. the whole region and stuff so like that. Now so. you voluntarily, as your hobby, you figure out this whole drone thing, and you get really good at it, and they still don't didn't see it as a resource until you had to literally kind of force it on them. Yeah, because yeah. it, it, they still are, you know, like I say, they're still risk aversive and they they, yeah. they kind of err on the side of caution a lot of times. And, there, yeah. and there's a lot of things that we have taken into consideration, the privacy issues. Yeah. You know, that's something that people want to understand a little bit better before they say, okay, go out and fly it, you know. Of course. So they had to feel good that I had an understanding of it and, yeah. and you know, same with the NBC with the Drone Ranger, right. really. So I mean, yeah, we'll talk about that that part a little bit later because that's its own, you know, thing. Yeah, and it it's is. pretty it's, interesting. It's a, it's a lot. So you were planning to do this as a business. So that's when yep. the, the Samara 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 Media Samara Media, Samara yep. Media came yep. in, right? Samara around. Samara actually came from my wife. My wife works for a landscape company, and uh-huh. one day when I was out walking the dog, and it was probably a little bit later than this time of year, the yeah. little helicopter started falling from the maple trees. Oh, from trees. the trees. Yeah, so I'm like, ah, helicopter, you know, <laughs> drone? What? Yeah. So I found a nice one on the floor, on the ground and yeah. brought it home, scanned it up, and then used uh, Photoshop and kind of inverted it and made as it a into logo. a quadcopter as a logo. Oh, that's so cool. You know, it, it hasn't... Mr. Creative. Oh, always thinking, <laughs> always thinking. All right. Know? So when you got into this, what, what kind of clients were you trying to go after? Did you have it kind of narrowed down to what you wanted to do, or were you just... I kind of you know? wanted to try and stay in the, sti- the, the visual aspect of it, of being mm-hmm. you know commercials or telling stories. Okay, what I really wanted to do is add it, add it to my storytelling ability. Yep. Um, I've, been, I've been reluctant in a lot of ways to get into the video field yeah. for journalism and stuff, and I think part of it's just... We, we have to do both on assignments sometimes, which makes it difficult. Okay. But I really do have a lot of fun when I'm doing video. Yeah. And to be able to do ground video and aerial video, to put together a really nice package. It's nice to You know, a... you, you watch a lot of these documentaries and, and a lot of movies and stuff like that, and you uh-huh. see where what we can add to a scene yeah. with, with aerial. Yeah, yeah. And and to me, it was just like, you know, I, I really want to try and grow in that area. A natural so, extension of it. Yeah. Ah, all right. 
what uh, so what kind of clients are you actually getting or is it is it are you able to you know i haven't had enough time to really develop develop a good client base yeah no nah, so it's, it's a mix it's, but working full time yeah. is is difficult to the one thing people don't understand sometimes is that the the amount of time you really need to put into a business to cultivate it oh, to, yeah. you know That's you crazy. can you can you can get clients and stuff like that and good clients but you have to be available to them yeah and when you you know yeah. your ba- a lot of our work is based on weather Mm. You know, you can say, okay, in New England, it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, you know, so you can base something on, okay, I'm going to be able to fly it next Thursday, uh-huh. and then next day, next Thursday, it's pouring like hell, and yeah. you're not getting up in the air. So, yeah. when's the next available time? Well, if I'm working my, yeah. my regular job, it makes it difficult. It to, makes it difficult to schedule yeah, something to, to so commit that. to somebody because mm-hmm. you, your, your your word and your you know relationships with your clients is yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you have to, and it's you're right. I was in the same position where you know you have a full time job, and yeah. uh, it's very difficult unless you have a perfect live in the area where the, the weather is no object. Yeah. Which yep. it's probably about three places around the globe that are lucky that way. Yeah, it is very difficult to commit to something because you <coughs> you do wear many hats and you do have to kind of work around the weather and work yeah. with the light to do it right, and it takes a lot of time. Um, it's very relevant. There are a lot of people thinking about whether hey, should I quit my job and by you know, don't no, don't quit don't. your job unless you have a good client base already built up yeah. and, and you have some and you have money put aside to, to to take care of your living expenses to grow it for at least a year yeah. or so yeah yeah or take a job that's flexible enough if you're I can see if you're already like a freelancer and you know I can think you know maybe a designer or animator right. illustrator and you're living a lifestyle then it's right. a nice addition to your portfolio right. If you have a job that doesn't has a flexible schedule, I know you know I have a couple of friends that will do the Uber thing and mm-hmm. and just just kind of do that, and then that right. way they can decide. I have some that that actually travel places and just to see you know to do a job, right. and then they'll like Uber down in that part of the country <laughs> for a while. So it's a little, but you got to be into that lifestyle. Yeah. you're probably not yeah. a family. You know, y- you're you're right. I, you know, seeing my age is here. You know, you, <laughs> I have roots in this state. I have family. You know, yeah. a lot of it is dedication to yeah. how much time can you commit to full time work you can and do. doing what you're doing because yeah. your clients become a lot of your life at that point. Yeah. You know, um, what I really like about what I do now is, you know, with the drone, with the current uh-huh. is it allows me to, to keep a regular type of schedule and it allows me to do, sh- do some more part. stuff. Yeah. I can really bring in the drone work that I like and, 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 and build your portfolio. All yeah, right. And, and, and really promote what we can do at the newspaper for storytelling. Yeah. So what kind of, did they get you a drone or are you using They did, own? yeah. They I, did? What did they get you? They uh, got me a Phantom 4 Pro. A Phantom which, 4 Pro. Which I have myself, you know, which is oh. what I wanted them to get me. Yeah, which you know. is the perfect machine. Yeah, it's for really nice. Like you know, I, I would really like something that gives me more flexibility with a lens and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I have a Inspire One Pro that I like because I can go out and change lenses and, and stuff yeah. like that, get you a different perspective as a photographer. Yeah. You don't want to just use the one same focal length if you can avoid mm. it. But, you know, you but can use it in a different way and and, and make it well, look good. It was on a, it's funny, we were talking about our wish, wish list in in the last um, last episode for the Phantom 5 because he saw these leaked pictures yep. with the you know camera yeah. where you can exchange the lens. And it seems like we may have to wait another half a year because it's the Phantom 4 Pro V2. I will probably have to wait a lot longer than that. Yeah. Well, because, and I say that because with the newspaper, we're... They have to depreciate the equipment for a little equipment bit longer. equipment and stuff like that. And just because yeah. they come out with a new, better thing that would, mm-hmm. you know, the cost effectively, it won't yeah. happen. But personally, so I may have to do that. You, you got know? into it building. At which point did you buy your first, out, what was your first out of the box um, unit drone? Uh, reluctantly, it was a Phantom 2. Phantom 2. Yeah. Oh, you had one of those? I did. I didn't I did. know. I thought you had a yeah. 3 or 4. I did because I had a GoPro. Yeah. You know, at the time you could still, I didn't want the Vision Plus. I didn't want the crappy little camera that they had. So with you just it, but slapped I had, the GoPro. So I had, a, I had a Phantom 2 with a, with a GoPro 3, yeah. Hero 3, and a two-axis gimbal to begin with. Yeah. You know, because that was the thing we talked about, hard mount oh, and everything. Man. And then it went to a two-axis gimbal and then yeah. a three-axis, which is beautiful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I bought, I think mine, well... Inspire one. What was here first? Inspire one or the Phantom three? Phantom two. Phantom two was your first. Phantom probably. two was there first. Yeah. So I think the Phantom two was my first one. We yeah. had some some heavy lifters. S, the S nine hundred may have been before the Phantom two around that time, maybe. Probably. Yeah, yeah. but that yeah, was you about were, the first you were into the big heavy lifters. 
yeah, Joe, you know, go yeah. big or go home. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I bought a Phantom 2 for, you know what I got it for? A furniture store's commercials. Really? Furniture store. Yeah, they needed something that we could fly inside and everything bigger would just make yeah. mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was I like, do you have anything we can fly GoPro stabilized? I'm like, I suppose we can get something. So we're doing, and that's that was the Phantom 2. So that was yeah. my first one too there. Yeah. And you got the Inspire. Do you use it photography, video, both? Yeah, for both. Mostly yeah. video. Mostly yeah. video. It, it's funny being a photographer. You would think that I'd really like to do the photography aspect of it, but uh -huh. I, I really enjoy the beauty of the video. Yeah. That these these machines create. It's different. You know, it yeah. is. It's it's really cool. Now for the all right. So what's your video? Twenty four frames per second, thirty frames per second. We always say that the older fashion guys like the twenty four frames per second look. I say this is from the time when film was expensive and had to be preserved and the cameras were not really moving. What's your opinion on this? Um, I think 30 is is more of a standard. You like 30? I do. Uh, Me too. The cinematic aspect of a 24, if I was really uh -huh. doing that kind of that yeah. kind of work, maybe I would go that direction. Well, if you need to match Especially it to ground cameras. Especially if you're matching it to ground yeah, cameras, high-end ground oh, cameras. Yeah, of course. That's Absolutely. The, yeah. But for the stuff that we're doing, and I think even the formats that we show them in, most of the time, they're more used to seeing a 30 yeah. frames per second, whether it be YouTube, the Vimeo, broadcast. you know, or broadcast. Yeah. You know? Stuff right. like that. So, but I also like throwing in some high speed, uh, slow motion stuff on occasion. You too. experiment a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. What's your favorite lens for the X5 for the Inspire? Right now, it's a 25 millimeter. It's a 25. That's yeah. my favorite too. Yeah. I've seen some people don't like the looks of it. I know. Some people are talking to the other. They, they say it's soft or it doesn't have this or that, but. It is a softer along the edges, I find. Yeah. But it's, it's uh, the feel to it is just. I love gorgeous. the compression. I was out flying it the other day in an orchard and, and yeah. it just had gave that really nice feel of. Yeah. yeah. It's just realnessness or yeah. and the, the parallax is there and it's. Yeah. yeah I also like, I also like the challenge. Yeah. You know, being a single operator, it's long. I, it's long, and you really have to try and hone your skills. Try not to you know? crash. Yeah, not trying to. <laughs> yeah, because you, you definitely have to realize you that could. you're probably twice the distance that you normally oh, would be it, from your subject, it puts and, you way ahead and, of it. and and stuff like that. But it yeah. also any of your swings, you yeah. know, whether it be your your panning or your yawing or anything, to try yeah. and keep your subject centered while you're doing that. Is difficult. not is more difficult, so it's it's more of a challenge to go out there and hone skills. I mean, I come from yeah. a day of shooting photography when you didn't have autofocus. Yeah, you know, so, thank yeah. God it does now because you know <laughs> my eyes don't focus the way they used to. But uh, great, but yeah, I like to challenge. I like to go out and challenge myself and, yeah. and get better. You yeah. Know? All right. What what do you use for what's your workflow? What do you use for editing? For videos, um, for photos, I use for the most part. I use Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro. Yeah, I I just. <laughs> I yeah, used Final Cut Pro Studio yeah. for the longest time, yeah. and then when X came out, I just I could not stand the magnetic timeline, but the, <laughs> and and really? I still have trouble with so it some days. Huh? Um, um, but I've been oh. using it for two years now, and and it, it has become easier the more I've used it. Yeah, um, it's a lot more simple, and things go on in the background nicely. Yeah. Um, I also use Premiere on occasion, sometimes After Effects. I'm starting to get into After Effects a little bit to to learn some more stuff on screen. Yeah. Um, Photoshop, Lightroom. I don't use Lightroom as much as I'd like to. Uh -huh. From the journalist aspect, we use Photoshop just because it's we're bare bones. We can't do a lot of manipulating to our photographs. Yes, you, you know. Yeah, you so, have to. So, so the keep Lightroom it real. aspect, yeah, a lot of the, the stuff you the can really gain, use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we try. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Photoshop is our mainstay. Gotcha. And, and in, um, when I'm shooting a lot of stuff, we use Photo Mechanic as a editing software for. Yeah our raw images yeah. to look at them quickly. Oh. You know, it's a browsing type thing. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right. How about you? What is your uh, preferred Same thing? Method? Lightroom, Photoshop. Lightroom for the most of pictures, Photoshop for any specialty stuff, and Final Cut Pro Really? X. Photoshop more for specialty than Lightroom? Well, yeah, if I need to, if I have a panoramic that doesn't stitch right, I need to fix that, <coughs> or I need to replace the sky, I'll just kick that over in a Photoshop. But other than that, I love the batch yeah. ability of Lightroom. It just... Uh, because the way the jobs work, you come back with, you know, you need to press, I don't know, give 30, 40 right. pictures and right. edit them and all that. So it's much easier to manage in Lightroom than Photoshop. Yep. And Final Cut Pro 10 with um, After Effects, Adobe After Effects for like So you can use tracking. After Effects with... Photo, no, there is no use, bridge. You but export it and you have then to bring prep it in your, Yeah, so yeah. like, I, I, but it's just very, you know, 
sell them when I have to do something in a 3D, like tracking labels, or yeah. I have to break up a scene to do like a cinema grab, you know, yeah. like, like using them for opening, closing for the videos. Yep. That kind of work, but mostly Final Cut. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I, I like about Final Cut Pro uh -huh. is the fact that you can buy it. Yeah. You can buy it outright. You don't have to subscribe. Yeah. You know, I'm tired of paying everybody and every and I know. everything. Because then you look a, at your, a, a your monthly then you look bill. at your account and you know, it's like, oh my god, you know, it's five pages. Cable's of gotten crazy. Dollar your here, cell phone's $2. crazy here and there. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, Adobe they want me to pay for using Photoshop, but I had to bite the bullet for Photoshop because when so I updated when I updated my my latest computer, yeah. my laptop, the OS that I updated would not support my photoshop 4 that i had for yeah. years you know so, so i had to buy the bullet and, and and buy the you know yeah. the subscription base on that yeah hot but I, but I won't spend 50 bucks a month to do premiere pro at this point i don't have enough work no, that's not to enough. do it you yeah, know so find a cup pro i could buy it outright and get the and upgrades good. and stuff like that yeah and people say well the subscription is better because you only pay by month but many people don't understand that if you cancel you're still on a hook for the rest of the time you subscribe for the year they charge you 50 percent of the remaining period up to that year so yeah. it's not but i think you could still do a month-to-month -month basis for it payments you just pay payments more. not the subscription i think i'm pretty sure yeah because yeah, it happened to me i had an extra because when we consolidated the companies they we I had an extra account. I wanted to cancel it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you got to pay us 50% on whatever the remainder of the subscription would be. It's like, oh, nice. That figures. Yeah, yeah, that figures. yeah, figures. All right. But moving on, if there was one or a couple of advices you would have for somebody contemplating getting into this as a business, what would that be? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you don't know. Things you wish you knew. Things I wish I knew. Yeah. I just, no, I think, you know, if anybody's trying to get into this, I think you really have to have some background in either industry, yeah. whether you're going to do construction and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, also realize that a lot of companies out there today are finding it easier to train somebody that already has the background in, in some of the technologies they're Because there are a lot of people using, with drones. And they can go out and buy a drone themselves. and, and, and Kind of like you did with the current, actually. Yeah. Somebody who's already in-house, who's already kind yeah. of well-versed in, in both. Yeah, okay. and there's so. a lot of construction companies out there today that are starting to bring in, or engineering firms are bringing yeah. it in to use it somebody on staff that knows how to use GIS for, you know, mapping and stuff like that. You can so, still provide the service to a lot of these companies, but, you know, you have to look into the legalities of whether you're giving something that's... If you're a surveyor, you're not approved. a surveyor. I'm not, I'm not a surveyor. I'm you're not data approved. acquisition. I'm yeah. data acquisition. You have to learn how you, you know, market yourself and how, because there's always somebody out there. Yeah. You're, you're stepping on somebody else's toes when you're getting into it. Yeah. You know. How do you market to your clients? What do you use? Um, I use Facebook a little bit. I, okay. I don't, there's, there's the other thing. I don't yeah. spend the money that you need to really do. Jump start it. To jump start it. Yeah. You know, I'm, okay. I'm a bare bones kind of guy so and, and I'm, I'm fearful in some ways personally. Yeah. In, in a sense that if I do get big enough, uh -huh. then I have to jump. You yeah. know, you can't you can't walk both sides of that line oh, I very know. long. You I know? Believe I've been there I know because you just been, then yeah. something's gotta give. You know, yeah. you're either not doing poorly on one or the other yeah. or both actually. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I pick up gigs here and there, you know, that I can do on my time, yeah. you know, and not feel like I'm getting into a conflict of interest. That's yeah. the other thing that I have to worry about now. Before because you before we didn't have a drone at the newspaper. I uh -huh. could pretty much do what I wanted yeah. as long as I did it on my time. Yeah. Now you have to. I have to start thinking a little bit more about conflicts of interest. Yeah. So I have to be very careful on where I go with that. Ah. But I would, you know, people should really look into marketing. You know, yeah. you have to. You got to put in a budget for adwords and and stuff like that yeah but that's constantly changing google's always changing their yeah. algorithms and their well they have to keep the like seo that. people busy and in, you know yeah. in, in business or yeah. productive uh cool so how do you what's your opinion of the market right now i mean is it difficult saturated. is it easy saturated I, th I think it's getting saturated but i i think every market gets saturated after Eventually. a while and sooner or later the 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 cream still rises to the top you know yeah you hope that uh, along the way things don't get beaten to a point where you're you're not getting the money you should be yeah. getting in a lot of sense. There's a lot of companies out there promising big things. Yeah. And I don't know if they can actually come through with what they're promising. Yeah. I'd like to think so, but sometimes what they're offering for you to do it. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't it wash doesn't in my book when I add it up, you know, yeah. personally. And now I have a full time job. Uh -huh. So it's easier for me to say that. For somebody who's just starting out and somebody who ha is younger, who has less, um, you know, things in the fire already. Yeah. You know, you can take that chance of, of doing things. And 
Hopefully there's a the work out there. Hopefully they work out. Yeah. So you can. All right. Yeah. So you think it's it? Uh, yeah, I'm about the same opinion. I just I, I do think that just because it's it's become easier to become a pilot. Yeah. You know, I mean, you and I both well, started. Did you? You taking got the light sport. You were flying. I too. was flying. I didn't. Oh I never got it. I never got it. But I was going up to a little airport yeah. in Waterbury, flying a little Piper Cub, and oh had a blast. God. I had a great instructor. It was and, awesome. I remember you know, talking about it. I was. I was yeah. At the same time, I was doing the go I, I, I was so reluctant about doing it, you know. But once well, I started doing it, it's like okay, the, the FAA is not going to do things quickly here. Yeah. It's not going to make it easier. So that's the so route I'm going to have to go. It's the only thing to do it. So I put 15 hours of my ass into a pilot you know into a piper cub and had a blast yeah but and i don't regret it but you spend all that money and then like a year later the faa says okay never mind now right. all you need is 150 dollars on a test and you don't even know how to fly a thing right yeah and, so, that, and that kind of makes it tough when you know yeah the law and the regulations yeah. any tech industry really i mean look at uber right yeah an autonomous car hit somebody and oh what do we do how do we so it, yeah. it can happen Who's to really anyone. liable there you know yeah, yeah. Totally. So we still have to figure it out. I think that the local laws and the privacy laws are just kind of the next battlefront for us. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and I think also with some of the uh, legislation that's being pushed by some of the big drone industries as far as the delivery services. Yeah, where creating they want, their they want to carve space. out their airspace. And, yeah. and the FAA don't want to give them above 400 feet, yeah. and they want to go between four yeah. and 200 uh -huh. and, you know, kind of knock us to 200 and below, which sometimes is not realistic for what we do. Yeah, no. You know, if, if you're doing cinema stuff, yeah, you're going to be down low. Yeah. If you're doing a lot of other things, you you need to be 400 feet a lot of times in order yeah. to, to get what you need to do. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's going to be fun. And if, right. if every... The problem is going to be if every locale out there decides that they have their own drone laws. And, their own and, rules. Yeah, it's kind of hard to... So far, it's not it's not it. a big deal. I haven't run into many things out in yeah. in my encounters, you know, on yeah. on jobs for the newspaper and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The well, police, because yeah, and we'll talk about a newspaper, but they can't really tell the journalist what to do or what not to do. Kinda. They like they like to think, you know, especially they're uh -huh. they're used to telling you, okay, there's your yellow line, your line of tape, don't yeah. don't go past yeah. it, you know. Okay. And now all of a sudden, I can take my drone and I can launch my drone behind yeah. that yellow line, yeah. And they can't stop me from going forward, yeah. You know, yeah. All right, so Fair enough. But we'll cover that in the journalism part uh, right okay. after this. All right, John. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? I that was really a half an hour interview. Oh my god, we talk a lot. Whenever no, we haven't god. seen each other for. And all to begin time. with, we we screwed up the intro three times. Three know? times I had to. Yeah, Only I'm without twice. my. I'm lost without Micah. Um, I'm lost without I'm Micah. Sorry. Micah, hurry home because Peter's lost. Man. I know. I know. Micah's doing. Micah's doing an environmental research. Actually, is he? Yeah, they're counting toads down in Mississippi. <laughs> we they're trying to do it with a thermal camera, but I was trying to tell him they're cold blooded. Um. <laughs> We'll see what he comes back with. I'm sure if anybody can find something hot the down there. It's going to be Micah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good All luck, right. Micah. All right, but he'll be back. Hopefully he'll be back. Okay, you guys, if you have any questions for John or for or myself, you can uh, either leave them down in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or you can hit the link in the show notes uh, and head over to our website. Leave them right there on our blog. And John, thank you so much. My and pleasure, Peter. Thanks will, for having me in. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this.